Bags. No, not you. No. No, bags. Shopping bags. Pretty much everybody has a plastic shopping bag in the kitchen drawer, or has so many they can't close the kitchen drawer, or so many they can't open the kitchen drawer. You know who you are. I get fed up with them. You just, you end up, you forget your bag and you get one at the shop. And We know as well they're not exactly environmentally sound these days, so we are persuaded not to buy them even though the people responsible for the plastic pollution is a tiny proportion that won't take responsibility. But that's a rant for another day, we're not going to go into that, I'm, I'm going to be good. Right, so, we are going to take one of these generic plastic carrier bags and we're going to turn them into a lovely cloth bag, which is as biodegradable as you like, will go through the washing machine, lasts a good long time, I've had years out of these kind of bags, and is fairly easy to make. They're not as cheap as your plastic ones, obviously, but if you've got some fabric from a leftover project, or like a pair of curtains that you don't actually like as curtains anymore, there's all kinds of fabric you can use for this. They're very simple to make. It's three rectangles. That's your pattern. You'll find that out in the video. And the construction, once you get the hang of which bits fold where, is actually very straightforward, and you can run one of these bags up very quickly at any skill level. So these are ideal if you're just starting out. I've had a few requests for some simpler projects and I thought this one would be a really good idea because even if it's not perfect, it's still going to be a shopping bag and who cares how beautiful your shopping bag is as long as it does its job. So this is a great one for cutting your teeth on and just getting into sewing without being too scared about it. You can make these plastic bags out of fabric and they last really, really well. This one's getting on for two years old now, and there are no issues. It goes through the washing machine, which is great, so it, it never gets or stays dirty. The bottom of it, it doesn't wear thin and get those little annoying holes in, the handles don't stretch out, and you can put a lot more weight in one of these than you can in one of these. So, I'm going to go through the process with you on how we take one of these apart to make a pattern, and then rebuild it in some leftover fabric. You want a fairly sturdy fabric for this. You don't want to be using uh, like shirtweight cotton or that sort of thing. You want something that doesn't stretch and ideally something that's fairly heavyweight. So you're looking at things like canvases. This is linen. Um, you wouldn't normally use linen but I'll show you why we're using that in a bit. Uh, heavy duty cotton is very good for this. Some upholstery fabrics, this is a curtain fabric basically. So you want something that's a good moderate weight. A bit like you would see on the Bags for Life that you see in the supermarkets alongside these things. The pattern is very simple. It's all just plain squares. The complicated bit is the order that you put the bag together. So forgetting the the bottom of it so it's got a nice square bottom that sort of thing so that's what I'm going to take you through on this video. The first thing you need to do is cut the sides off the bag. Maybe not with my good scissors. Less good scissors. On the sides of these bags, bring this up so you can see, they have a little heat seam pressed which holds all the edge together. You want to cut as close to the like inside, like the bit you put things in the bag, as you can, so that you're just taking this heat seam off. That means that when we make the pattern it's a little bit more accurate. wiggly strips. And then you can open the bag out flat. And this is your main pattern piece. The top 
and well it's both tops really are turned over and again these are heat seamed down we'll have to do this with some stitching instead I'll cover that in a bit and the same with your handles they're heat pressed in place so you want to remove the handles next but when you do don't just cut through them if you sort of fold the bag and then you can snip behind where the handle goes on. Like that, because that gives you, gives you a little hole, but it preserves this fold line here and this line here, so you've got your reference points. It also, it also preserves the length of the handle, so you know how long these need to be when you put them on. Do that on both sides. And that's your handles off. Nice and easy. So this is your pattern piece for a bag. One giant rectangle and two smaller rectangles. The next task is to transfer this either to some pattern paper or to the fabric that you've got. I would recommend if this is the first time you're making one of these bags then draw around this onto a piece of paper. Now you don't have to use special um, pattern paper for this, you can just use newspaper or wrapping paper or wallpaper. As long as it's paper, the lighter weight the better, then you'll be fine. The most important dimensions on the bag are your outside dimensions. So from this point here to that point there and then from this side to this side. That will tell you how large a piece of fabric that you need. You have to imagine as well these turned over sections folded out flat. So our total is 46 inches or 117 centimeters by 17 and 3 quarter inches or 45 centimeters. To figure out where your next points are, you can either just trace this onto another piece of paper exactly as it is and recreate it. If you're going to do it this way, which personally I find a little bit easier, you want to just take note of your measurements from each fold point to each hem point as it were. So we start at this edge and it's six and a half centimeters or two and three quarter inches. From here, to here and then from this point to this point it's 34 centimeters or 13 inches and this is the bottom of the bag so this is the first fold so that you see is the bottom of the bag then this section here folds up to give you the base so you gap from there to there and from here to here is the same, which is 11 centimeters, or four and three eighths inches. And then of course, this other side is these measurements again, so, because it's completely mirrored. For your handles, they are 32 centimeters long and three centimeters wide, or 12 and a half inches long and one and one eighth inch wide. When you cut these pieces out, there's a few things to be aware of. You can just copy exactly what's here, but if you do that, these handles will be so skinny you'll barely be able to use them, and the bag will be a bit smaller than it would have been originally. So you need to add some seam allowance on, depending on your preference, it will depend how much seam allowance that is. I tend to use a quarter to a half an inch. Some people use more. You need to as well remember that when you've got this piece laid out, these sections here, they fold that way. So you'll have to add that on to the length of this square. And you'll have to add a little bit of seam allowance for this edge because we'll be folding that under later. The handles need to be doubled in width 
and then you need to add your seam allowance again, but you need to add it to both sides. So whatever seam allowance you're using, double it, and then add that to the width of these handles, which has also been doubled. It sounds very complicated, but I'll cut out the fabric and then you'll see what I mean. We're also going to make these handles just a little bit longer because there's a stronger way of putting them on than just sewing them on top here. So I'll run through that. thought this might happen. We've encountered our first problem. Because I'm using leftover fabric I have to work with what I've got. And you can see this distance here is quite a bit larger than this distance here. So I'm going to cut two extra squares here and then sew them onto the end. You can just pretend that it's all one piece when I've done it. I'll construct it in exactly the same way, you'll just have to ignore these two end seams that we're going to end up with. There we go, that's our pieces cut out. The bag's only made of three pieces of fabric. You have your main long one, which we're going to pretend is one piece and I didn't mess up. And then you have the two handles. Now to make the straps for the handles, if you lay the two original handles down side by side with a gap for the seam allowance, and then use the width of the handle to lengthen each strap and add a seam allowance on and that will give you the new square. I'll drop in a little diagram here with these measurements so that you have a quick reference for what size these should be. It is just rectangles so there's nothing complicated. If you can draw a square you're fine. Now because it's me, I'm going a little bit off track. I have some scraps of this copper fabric that I've been looking for a use for. It's just a bit too much to throw away, hasn't been quite enough to make anything out of. So I'm going to put some details on these bags by just putting a stripe of this down the middle, both sides. This is entirely optional. If you just want to make a bag, ignore this bit. I just saw an opportunity and I'm not passing it up. We're now ready for sewing. The important thing is that you mark where each of these fold lines are and you mark where this seam is pressed here because that's where you'll be sewing this top section. When you make the bag up, Fold from the centre point here. Okay, here we go. So this is the pin that's in the middle, and these are the two either side. So you're folding this piece up so that these lower ones meet, and then you bring the rest of the bag up, like so. And then we'll just sew along here, and that will give you that pockety base that these have. You have options on this side seam. You can all French seam it, you can put edge binding on it if you want. It's really up to you how complicated you want to go with this one. But before we get to that point, we need to do the handles. Doing the handles is rather like doing gigantic belt loops. All you do is fold the pieces you cut for the handles in half, one long straight stitch, and then you turn them inside out. I'm just using a crochet hook here, and you just push your fabric through, to 
comes out the other side. And there you go. When you press these, you want to press it so that the seam is on the middle. That makes them a bit more comfortable and makes them just look a little bit smarter. It's now time to do the handles on the bag and it's quite easy to get these wrong so a little bit of care is required. One thing you need to do before you lay anything out is you need to press your top folds. So pretend this seam here is actually a press line and this is all one piece because it would be normally I just fudge this one. So that's your first fold line. Your second fold line is the piece that you turn under for the hem. Now this is where you pinned or marked here and here, which is where the original heat seam is pressed in on the plastic bag. So once that's pressed and folded, that gives you your nice clean top edge. It also catches the handle, and this is quite important. When you do the handles, you can actually set them to whatever size you personally want. With this bag, if you really wanted to, you could actually make the handles much longer, set them further apart and make this into a shoulder bag very, very easily. I might do that in the future. For this one, this is just a carrier bag, so it's a fairly short handle. And the way I get a rough idea of how big the handle is, is I put my hand down on the bag, and then I take the handle itself, and I put that around my hand. That then gives me a rough idea of how wide the handle should be for it to be comfortable for me and it tells me how far from the edges I need to go. Now I already know on this bag that the distance from the edge of the handle to the edge of the bag is 6 inches which is almost 15 centimeters. So as long as that distance both sides is correct and I've already marked it with some pins, then I know the handle's going to be okay. Now when you made this handle, you pressed the seam from when you turned it the right way out onto the middle of one side of the handle. This is to hide it and also to keep the handle nice and flat. But when you lay it out in the bag, you want the seam to face the fabric. You don't want the seam showing up. And you bring the handle over to your two marks that you made. This is your seam line about here that you'll be sewing and you want this bit of the handle to be about the width of a finger which is, what is that? It's about three quarters of an inch or eh, about a centimetre and a half ish. So just a little bit sticking up above the seam line. This hides the raw edges, gives it some strength. And the handle will actually fold itself. So the shape that you see handles have, another nice thing about linen is it actually presses really easily, you will end up with a handle that is this sort of shape. And then all you need to do is pop a couple of pins in, but do that below the seam line. So this is the lower part of the bag, this is the top of the bag because otherwise you'll end up with pins stuck inside where you're sewing and then it'll be a nuisance. So you've got your handle in place, you've got your press top done, you can fold that down and then you top stitch just along this edge to catch the handle. Now this will make sense in a little bit, I know it looks a bit strange at the moment, but when I've done the top stitching here, I'll bring you back and I'll show you what we do next. One quick note as well. 
I've already done the other side and I'd actually already done this side. But I put the handle on the wrong way around. If you do it with the seam up like this, when you actually use the bag, what we'll be doing is lifting that handle and then on the outside of the bag you can see the seam lines which is undesirable. So I'm going to unpick and redo this one as well. To correct the handle mistake all I've done is unpick where the handles were sewn in, just enough to pull the handles out and turn them round. I'm just going to redo that little tiny bit of stitching. It's always best when you do this, just overlap beyond where you've unpicked. It just makes everything nice and secure. Now that you've done this line of top stitching here, the next thing to do is put the handles where they need to be because at the moment they're folded into the bag. You can leave them like this and you can just use it like that but it's not very strong. So what you want to do instead is fold the handle up and this little bit of edge here, try not to squish that up when you do this so everything wants to sit nice and flat and also try and make sure that this is a nice 90 degree or as close as you can get so that everything sits up nice and straight. You should only need the one pin and that should just stop the handle from wandering off. And then on the outside of the bag you have a little handle which is spot on for your hand. Again, you can make these handles a little bit longer if you prefer a slightly longer handle. I find this works just fine. The next bit of sewing that you will need to do is just a top stitch along this very top edge. And that will as well help keep everything in shape. And that will hold the top and bottom of the handle and make it very, very strong. And this is what your seam ends up looking like when it's done. If you folded this top edge rather than had to use a separate piece of fabric as I have, it does look just a little bit smarter. It's exactly the same construction technique as well. So you can see you have a decent sized handle there, and on the inside you just have your two lines of stitching which catch this handle. We shall now sew the sides up. To do the side seams you need to put the seams on the outside. This is because of how the base is folded. If you're not too worried about how it looks, you can just run the overlocker or serger along this outside edge and call it done, and that would be a finished bag. That would be fine. I'm going to use my favourite, the French seam again. It's nice and strong, it's very, very tidy, and it will replicate the construction of the plastic bag. But the first thing you need to do is figure out how to do the base. So if you remember, we put some pins in along this edge. Now, depending on how you've marked it, the technique is still the same. The important thing is you have these three points here. So this is your center line where the middle pin is, and then these are the two outers. These are basically the bottom of the bag. and This is the middle of the base and you need to bring this middle pin up to that one and then this pin up to that one and that makes the shape for the base. So you end up with a seam where if you were to open it up this is what it would look like but we're actually sewing the whole thing closed as it was on the plastic bag. So you won't have that. This makes the corner quite strong while allowing the base to flatten out so you can put things in 
and the French seam will hide all of the raw edges and make this, which is one of the highest stress parts of the bag, very, very strong. I'd recommend when you actually pin this, start from the top. The bit that you're going to see is going to be this top edge here. So make sure that your tops are nice and level. And as you pin down to the bottom, you might find there's some slight difference in level at the bottom here. As long as you keep everything nice and smooth and even, you can actually jiggle this about a little bit until you get it nice and smooth. Once you have everything all even, we're then going to run a seam up each side with a fairly large seam allowance on this one because we will be turning these hems. As usual when we do the French seams, it's a fairly generous seam there and once you've actually sewn this line you then need to cut out whichever side is going to go inside the seam so you cut half of your seam allowance off there. You fold your raw edges to the stitch line and then fold it over again and then sew along the edge and that will give you your French seam. And it ends up looking like this side. Now when you've seen me do these before, you've seen me hold the fabric flat and then sew it down. You can't really do that with the bag because when you get to the bottom, because you've got the shape of the bottom here, you can't really sew it down flat. It'll just get in its own way. So I've opted not to do that. The advantage is that keeps the shape of the bag as it is. So this should keep its shape much, much better when you try to put things in it. One freshly pressed bag. Being linen, it won't stay fresh pressed like this for very long. It will go wrinkled, but that's fine. It's a shopping bag. You see the nicely sized handles at the top, a little bit of decorative bit on the front. And this opens out on the bottom, so you've got a nice flat surface. Also, this is why I wasn't using this fabric for anything else. It has some rust stains on it. And unfortunately, there's a few of those all over this fabric I've got, along with some sun fading, so it was always destined to be something practical like this. Let's see how much shopping we can get into it and show you how strong these bags are. You made it to the end. Brilliant. These bags are great. Now, unfortunately, I can't do the reveal I wanted to do. I was going to go to the shop and use the car, but um, the car looks like uh, this So that's not going to happen so instead of improvised Story of my life so here we go on shopping bag and some shopping So let's see how much of this goes in here heavy stuff to the bottom eggs on top Not forgetting these little guys. That's a good amount of stuff. And it's perfectly strong enough. Have a go. Let me know how you get on with these. I'd love to know if you have success or have a different way of doing it. And of course, don't forget, like, 
comment, subscribe, you know, all the good YouTube stuff. Right, I best put this back in the kitchen, I suppose. That's where it lives. See you next time.